Hey, hello guys. Welcome back to another exciting episode of Get It Advice. So before we start, please do like, subscribe, share our channel and encourage us to put more of such like content in this channel. So today in our class, we are going to talk about SAP ISU FICA master data and how it is related to SAP ISU as well. With that, with that we will also do some real time practical examples of this series. So do watch out till the end and those who haven't seen our SAP ISU series, please watch the SAP ISU series first, then come back to SAP ISU FICA series, which will be easier for you to understand. So, so do watch out till the end and do let us know your comments in the comment section. Let's start the class. Okay. So I'm just explaining that we can put the marital status uh, like uh, married or something. Okay. And then save it to create the business partner. Now the business partner is created. So we created two business partners here. So let's move back and uh, and understand how we can create the relationship between the business partners. Okay. Okay, so you can see the uh, to create a a relationship we have a t called called b u m r okay so let's go to b u m r and b u p t to create a business partner relationship So here you can see the business partner relationships. Okay. Now go to create. Now we create two business partner, business partner one and business partner two. So our business partner number is something 920. Let's see. FPP3. Yeah, so our business partner number is 900521. So this is business partner two and one is nine double zero five two zero now relationship category so here we need to understand what are the relationship category we have and how we can link them okay so let's consider business partner one is married to business partner two so business partner one is the primary responsible to pay the bills for business partner two. So in that case, each married to. Okay. Or if uh, business partner two is the uh, child from business partner one, so you can put has a child. Okay. So from the relationship, we can understand who is the primary person on whom we can charge. Are you getting? So let's consider Haji child. So in India, it's very common that the father pay for the child. Just 
agreed date and till which date let let's the consider that person who is uh, the child from business partner one is allow or is uh, uh, willing to pay for business partner two till he become 21 years okay so in that case we can put some date so here i'm just putting a date till which date it will be valid so let's consider business partner two's age is right now 10 years okay so till 38 business partner wants to pay okay so let's just create a relation so 9520 is valid and all these details are created has a child okay now save it okay now the business partner relationship is created now if we'll go to the business partner one right now okay now you can see 9520 okay so this is the business partner two and now we can see the relationship so now you can see in the description you can see is a child of business partner one whose name is ketu kumar right so that's how the details are there any queries if you will get time there are a lot of uh, relationships to create like more than uh, 20 type of relationships are there so you can go and create and uh, if required you can use so that's how the business partner now let's move the next uh, terminology which we call the contract account now contract account is what we called sorry contract account is uh, as i mentioned it's a it's a uh, it's it's the understanding between the um, between the utility company and the business partner how the business partner need to pay how he will be charged all those details okay so that's how we'll move to the uh, contract account so i have already explained these things so how to relate, create the relationship and what are types of relationships and those attributes how we can use okay so let's move to the next is contract account now contract is a different thing whereas contract account is a different thing so sometimes <laughs> this partner itself is known as a contract partner now when you see contract partner and contract account both are different things the contract partner is business partner itself whereas contract account is how you need to pay ask me a question if we want can we change the field all the details yes we can so we have a screen structure we can go and do that but as I mentioned in SAP, you have two kinds of people, technical people and consultant people, consulting people. So technical people, they do all these changes, other stuff. If they don't, so functional people do that, but uh, mostly it is part of technical changes. Okay. So there you can modify these screens. Let's move to the contract account. Now contract account is um, the contract account combines all contracts of one business partner that move the same type of payments and dealing data. Now, contract account is managers using open items, like if there would be any amount payable or receivable. So those all details are linked to the contract account. So that means when we create the um, contract account, it's creating a separate ledger. And that ledger is useful to provide the information to the business partner what is their payable or receivable. Now, the contract account contains uh, controlled data as well. Okay, just give me a minute. 
So I'm just explaining the contract account also holds the control data, like to which bank details we are provided to do the uh, direct debit or direct credit, the warnings, if somebody is not paying, what are the stages of warnings we can do, that is the dunning data. The payment data, if you are not paying, who will be the alternate payer? Okay, the bill recipient who will receive the bill or who will receive the dunnings, like the warning details. So now, uh, a single business partner may have multiple contract accounts. Okay. So one is to end relationship is there. So that means if you create a single business partner, below that you can create uh, one, two, three, four, or n numbers of contract accounts. Okay. And last time we discussed why we need different contract accounts because. Um, for different different utilities or maybe for different different services there may be different different uh, uh, dunning process or controlling data and those controlling data will be defined under the contract account so that's how we need to define the contract account uh, for a single business partner but for different services there will be different contract accounts okay now if we understand what is the contract account and bp link so the major stuff, what we are getting from the business partner is the credit worthiness. Uh, I'm just explaining that the business partner and the contract accounts are interlinked. And from the business, uh, from the business partner, we are getting the credit worthiness, which is generated automatic or manually. But to get those information, we need these basic information like payment terms, interest key, account determination ID, account category, and individual dunning procedures. So if any of them is violated, so your credit worthiness will be reduced. Now credit worthiness is what? It's the, um, the reliability on the customer. If a person's credit worthiness is high and he's not able to pay for a month, then he can get extension for the payment, like deferral. But if the credit worthiness is not good, because his history is not good on these criteria, like he didn't pay on time, he paid some interest, uh, his, there are multiple dunning against him. So in that case, the, the credit worthiness for the business partner is not getting good. In that case, for write-off, for, uh, for deferral, it is difficult, which are particularly part of FICA processes. So now in contract account also, we have two types of data. One is general data, which holds all the information like account name, uh, control data, uh, account uh, assignment data, whereas the other part is the dunning and payment data. Okay, like how we get the incoming payment, what will be the outgoing payment uh, methods, all those details. Now these incoming payment method or outgoing payment methods are again, very complex part, like payment methods may be different. It may be a cash, a check, direct debit, any stuff. So those things need to be defined and those defined things need to be assigned to the contract. Similarly, uh, dunning data, dunning as I mentioned multiple times, this is the warning. So if somebody is not paying, so he will get a first later. So you are not paying, you have to pay within this time period. So that is the denning data. Now, so what would be the labels of denning? Uh, label two, three, four, seven, so multiple labels of dennings are there. So now those labels of denning need to be controlled. And then with the denning, uh, we'll get the recipient. Who will be receive the denning information? at the block region, all those details. Okay, if somebody is not paying, we block the invoicing, we block the um, uh, the supplies, all those details based on the dunning, right? So that's one of the major stuff in FICA.
Okay. So now when we create the data, we'll have to update all these information. Okay. Uh, but uh, content account is not only uh, linked to all these information. It is also linked to the specific uh, activities of finance, which includes the tolerance group. Like if somebody is having an invoice of 120 rupees and he want to pay that 120 rupees, but he has only 119 rupees. Okay. He's paying. Whether we should consider that as a clear or should we consider that is not clear, right? Because it's only about one rupee stuff. So in that case, we introduce a concept called tolerance group. If it's within five rupees, if we pay 115 also, we'll consider that it's a clear, okay? And we'll move that five rupees to the next invoice, okay? Like that, we'll do that and we close that invoice. So that's what we call the tolerance group. Mostly within a pound or within a rupees, because sometimes it happens that somebody has a invoice of 500.50 rupees, but he has only 500 rupees. So he paid that support so 0 0.50 for that. We should not open the invoice. We need to close that. And we uh, that 0 0.50 will send to the uh, the next invoice or the area. Okay. But anyway, area we can send anything like if somebody paying partially also we send that amount as area to the next invoice. But we, in this case, we close that invoice as the tolerance group is allowing to pay and close that invoice. Similarly, paid by, these are the details entered by the cash dex person who paid this interest key if somebody is not paying or somebody has a security money, how much interest they will get? All these details are in the contract account. Now there is a concept called collective bills. So I'm just explaining in bit wise what is collective bills. Collective bill when there is a single business partner, okay, which holds multiple business partners. So now the first business partner we call are the a parent business partner, whereas other business partner which link to that business partner, we call the child business partner. Now, when we combinedly invoice them under a parent business partner, we call them a collective bill, right? So mostly collective bills happen in, in societies. Like if there is a society which has 100 families, all these families will get individual invoices. And at the end of the day, the society will get a combined invoice which is called a collective bill and that collective bill need to be paid by the, the whole society. Okay, now in that case also, the, uh, the parent and child relationship is defined under the contract account. Similarly, payment conditions or payment terms, those stuff is also defined under the contract account. What is the payment term or payment condition? If the invoice gets generated on a particular date, let's today is 21st of January and it gets generated. So within how many days the person need to be pay? So those terms will come under payment condition for payment terms. Then the third term is coming clearing category. Clearing category is like if there is an invoice of 500 rupees and somebody pays 400 rupees. So for which open items need to be clear first? So those priority and categories we need to define under clearing category. Obviously account determination ID, which will link to your GL and to main sub ledger, and it will define the, uh, the uh, invoice at the uh, uh, contract account level and at the contract level to link them. Then application form, which is a, your invoice, so in uh, it comes from a uh, uh, from a PWC uh, print work bench with a name that this would be your invo uh, invoice uh, a print document and that print document need to be allocated at the contract account level when you generate the invoice that particular form will call from the contract account to hold your line items and generate the uh, physical document or a PDF document to send to the customer. 
Okay, so all these terms we need to define when we create the contract account. Okay, <clears throat> and once uh, that's done, like as I mentioned here, the tolerance group is defined here. Okay, so now the tolerance group is somewhere it is within 3.50. So uh, they give, a, give an example of 273.50 and 3.50 within that they can receive and clear that. So 270 is received and cleared. Any questions on, on those uh, term terminologies? Uh, just one thing I wanted to ask, like uh, collective, like the concept of collective bidding, you say that it is applicable for a society in which uh, it brings uh, everyone needs to pay, but the the bill will be uh, the uh, society will also get the bill, right? Yeah. So, uh, like we were, uh, so is it only applicable like for society because uh, when we were no, 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 the it's not applicable only for society. It, it's just one example. Okay, let's, there are five persons staying in a straight route. Okay. And um, and all these persons define, okay, we'll pay together. Okay, all those five persons decide they will pay together. Now, for each of them, we'll create one, one contract account, contract account one, two, three, four, five. And apart from that, we'll create a parent contract account, which will be linked to all these contract accounts, one, two, three, four, five. And that parent contract account also get an invoice and all these individual persons also getting one one invoice and these individual invoices uh, paid by the uh, individual households and finally that will come to the um, uh, the invoice amount which would be into the collective invoice and that need to be paid together right so in that way all the five persons actually paid their individual amount and that is collectively paid at the utility company. Are you getting? Yes, yes, I'm getting that. Yeah. So in, in the collective contract account, when I'm saying we'll fix a parent account, now that parent account need to be defined at the contract account level. Okay. So that's how uh, that's linked to the contract account. Okay, let's go. To create a contract account, our T code is CAA1. Are you using CAA1, right? When you are creating the contract account? Yes. Yes. Because contract account is a concept in utility. Now, when I'm create, putting the contract account category, you can see we have two types of category, whether I'm going for a, a contract account or a collective bill account, right? So in that case, I'm just going for a simple contract account. If I will go for a collective bill account, that would be a parent account. Now here, we need to define some details which are mandatory in nature. You can put more details, but the contract account name, uh, legacy data is not mandatory. If you want, you can put like uh, this contract account name I am putting as KK. <clears throat> now, account holder relationship, uh, because this is a primary one, I don't need any account holder relationship here. Restriction key, which is your clearing information so that would i'll put here then tolerance group so there is already some tolerance group i'm just using that tolerance group clearing category again uh, standard clearing category okay clearing category so which are already uh, previously configured i'm just using those informations then uh, account class so I'm putting this a private uh, customer account determination ID, account determination ID. I'm putting residential payment terms within how many days you need to pay. Uh, so here I'm putting 0001 budget billing procedure. Okay. Oh, there is no options here. Now 
Finally, bill form, uh, where the physical uh, line items need to be printed. Okay, they don't have any bill form. That's a default form, smart form. Okay, so this is the tab one of contract account, where these are the mandatory fields. Then we'll move to the tab two, payments and taxes. Now, this is the most important stuff where the content account linked to the company code. Like, as I mentioned last time, the company code is the primary under which the general ledgers are allocated. So without company code, we can't do any transactions. So we need to create a company code. Here, we are using ENHT as the company code or OCPL. So under ENHT, we'll create ENHT. Okay, so that is standard company code. Now group of company code. So company code group ENST and company code is ENST. So under a single company, also that may be multiple company. So that single, uh, that multiple company code is called group of company code. Whereas the single individual one is a standard company code. Okay, then Dunning and correspondence. Okay, so it is asking for uh, some tax procedure. So tax determination standard procedure of cash accounting. Now here you can see Dunning. So Dunning procedure, uh, whatever is defined previously, I'm going with that Dunning procedure 01. Okay, now that's enough. Now convergent invoicing is not there with us. Uh, if somebody is paying from outside country, or some in other currencies. In that case, we need convergent invoicing. So let's save this. It's saying that there are two uh, errors. One is at the clearing restriction, other in billing procedure. Both are in the tab one. Billing procedure. Let's see what are the errors. Clearing restriction. Not permitted to billing procedure activities. Billing procedure activities. Okay. So. Now your contract account is created. It's 101800. Any questions how to create the contract account? Now to see the contract account, we have a T code called CAA3. Okay. Now open this. Your contract account is created. And you can change, uh, you can see all the details. All good. Yes. yes, very good. So now, apart from that, contract account clearing category account determination ID, then Dunning uh, Dunning procedures all we defined there. Then we created the contract account. Now, finally, we move to the contract, which is the agreement. <clears throat> the, the problem to create a contract is that we need the technical data because contract only created when we do a move-in and the move-in will be done only we have a technical data. Now let's go and create the technical data. So, uh, so under technical data, you can see, we need to create the connection object, premise and installations. Okay. Okay, so let's move to the technical data. Okay, so very big data model. Uh, we are not going in depth of this data model because each time we'll link to whole of this. But currently, we'll go to create the just a simple structure of data model where we create a connection object that link to a premise, that premise link to an installation. 
Okay, let's go. So to create a connection object, uh, okay, let's me do one thing. I'll put the uh, business master data into a structure. Our business partner. We put as FPP three, right? Okay, so our business partner is nine five nine zero zero five two zero. So just put here, and you can see the structure. So we have a business partner, we have a contract account. Now we need to create the connection object. Okay, to create the connection object, the T code is ES fifty five. Just go there, create it. Okay, description, uh, connection object. Just click a 15. Now here you can give the connection of object address as well as uh, it may happen that the business partner may be staying somewhere else and the connection object where we are providing the services, there may be somebody else is staying, maybe tenant, maybe uh, his daughter or son. So you can put some extra name or something here. And similarly, uh, the addresses may be different or may be same, okay? Uh, so street address, HH street. Okay, postal code seven five one zero zero two. The city same Bosnia, and house number eight two one. Country same India. Region your your Odisha. I think it's eighteen or something. Okay, now you can save this and your connection object will get created. Okay, save this. 